surviving the Great Depression would be Dorothy Frances Bullitt's greatest financial and personal challenge. In 1929, her father, C.D. Stimson, died. Her only brother, Thomas, an accomplished aviator, died in a crash in 1931. And the following year, her husband, Scott Bullitt, died of cancer. At age 40, Dorothy Bullitt was left to raise three kids and manage the family fortune. She hadn't gone to college, never held a job. She couldn't even type. It was in a time when there was no place to go but up because banks closed. And, uh, there was nothing that was ever like anything else. My name is Dorothy Bullitt. I am the granddaughter of Dorothy Bullitt, who founded King Broadcasting Company. She had gone to a World's Fair in the 20s and had first observed television in that context. And, and she was a nerd when it came to technology. She, she was excited about what was cutting edge and new. In 1947, Mrs. Bullitt acquired a struggling radio station located on the 21st floor of the Smith Tower. She bought the call letters K-I-N-G for a song from a merchant ship. K-I-N-G, Seattle. My name is Steve Wilson, and I was a writer, producer, talent, and mostly director at King for most of my adult life. She was really smart, really smart, when she bought a television station. Those were novelties in 48, and that's what she wanted. She had a radio station. She saw this TV thing, and KRSC started, and it was kind of foundering, and so she bought it and got the, the call letters, K-I-N-G. That's genius. The station's first broadcast was a football game between West Seattle and Wenatchee on Thanksgiving Day, 1948. And people watched although there were only about 6,000 TV sets in the area at the time. It was really very funny looking on a seven-inch set. Uh, couldn't see the ball at all. Could hardly see the players. <laughs> <laughs> Bolstered by the viewership, Mrs. Bullitt bought the FM and television properties of KRSC in 1948, renamed them King, becoming only the 11th television station in the United States the only station west of the Mississippi and north of San Francisco. It was very chancy, and I was, uh, I was very much afraid of it, but I thought we could maybe swing it. Mrs. Bullitt paid $75 for a logo, King Mike, created by Walt Disney. It took her nearly 10 years, but she eventually got what she wanted most, the NBC affiliation held by the Fisher family at KOMO. She used the charm offensive, inviting NBC President David Sarnoff and his wife to her home for dinner and drinks. That's how she built the business, was about was through relationships and cunning. Mm -hmm. There was some cunning. Okay. My name is Steve Clifford. I was uh, CEO of King Broadcasting Company from 1987 to 1992. The whole time I was CEO, the Bullets never talked to me about profits, never once. It was a community service that happened to kick off a whole lot of money. Mrs. Bullitt realized that local news was community service with huge revenue potential. Well, gentlemen. News, once a male-only proposition, would change. In 1971, Jean Anderson became the nation's first female evening news anchor. The ratings took off. Jean became the queen of king. I'm Jean Anderson, and for many years, I was an anchor at King Television and the HealthLink reporter. I never thought about, am I the first, until decades later somebody wrote and said, yes, I'm writing a book, and I found out you're the first, and so, that's great. But you're not focused on being the first when you're starting because you're just trying to get the job and do the job. I'm Mike James. I was an anchor at uh, King Television from 1972 to 1993. You know, the most fun I had with Gene was during the commercial breaks. And we would chat and we would tell stories and we would give opinions about, uh, you know, what we'd just seen or something. Thank goodness the mics weren't on at that point. When I was pregnant with my first child, they weren't sure what to do with this person, with this tent of a dress and this very large stomach. So they lowered my chair and raised the desk so no one would know that I was pregnant. The television station outgrew its old studio in a garage on Queen Anne Hill it moved to a refurbished furniture store on Aurora Avenue in 1953. 
1979, it broke ground on a shiny new headquarters on Dexter Avenue North. The King Broadcasting Empire expanded. By 1981, it owned four television stations with more to come, radio stations from San Francisco to St. Louis, cable TV stations in California and elsewhere, and its own Washington, D.C. News Bureau. Dorothy was a superb business person. And even at age 92, she would ask the toughest questions in a board of directors meeting. My name is Ken Jones, and I was a photojournalist at King TV for 42 years. And somebody was talking about budgets, and she interrupted and just said, money? We've got lots of money. I just want to do good work. And that filtered down to everybody in the department. What I really enjoyed, the one thing that she really impressed upon me was the, the two cocktail lunch, so. In 1991, two years after Mrs. Bullitt died at the age of 97, the television business she had bought for $375,000 was sold to the Providence Journal for $500 million. It was such a pleasure to know not only Mrs. B, but her daughters who served on the board, Patsy Collins, Harriet Bullitt, then they all shared the same vision, public service. I learned so much by watching, and I've been, <laughs> I've been with this company right. now, I yeah. think, I figured it's almost, what, 22 years, and they're still learning so yeah. much there. All of us are learning oh. so many wonderful things. So, so many great little nuggets. Uh -huh. It sounds like her management style was more about just, just walking around, checking on people. Yeah, they call it <laughs> management by walking around. They did, and they tried to learn everyone's name, and it wasn't unusual for Mrs. B or the president at the time, Ansel Payne, to take staff to lunch, just to chew the fat, kind of find out about each other. Definitely a very personal style. I know you've been hard at work on several different other stories. Uh, what can we expect tomorrow night? Okay, so tomorrow we're going to talk about when King was the news, when we made the headlines here in Seattle, including the, the time a car drove right into the lobby at our old Dexter Avenue location. And who can forget when the cast of Almost Live scared a bajillion people by <laughs> reporting the Space Needle had fallen over on April Fool's Day. That's tomorrow night oh, at 7. That story is legendary. Oh. Sorry, thank you.